Hello, hello, hello. I saw some of y'all jamming before we came live. I saw y'all. Listen, I don't know about you, but I am so excited to be here this evening with you. I don't, I don't think you're ready. I really don't think you're ready. But before we hop into all of the goodness that will be Take Your First Trade, I, wanted, I want you to get to know me a little bit better because we are going to be rocking with each other throughout the entire experience. I am Alicia Reese, and I am so excited to be your host for the Take Your First Trade. You want to know what? When I first learned about this experience, number one, I felt a little bit of relief, right? Because, oh my goodness, I don't have to keep trying to figure out this thing alone. That was number one, right? Number two, I get to do it with all of you. So not only do I get to get some of the best of the best, and Terry Egeoma is the best, not only do I get to get one of the best humans on this side of heaven to teach me about this trade and about this stock market, but I also get to do it with all of you. So now, because we are just getting started, and I want to know a little bit more about you. Where are you all calling in from? Where are you listening from? And now, I don't know if y'all know, but now listen, I was, I was raised in holiness, okay? And in holiness, y'all got to talk back to me. So even though you might not be able to see each other, I can see you. So I want to hear you guys talk back to me. Where are you guys? Oh, I see we got some Vegas. We got Houston, New York, Chicago, Georgia, oh, Texas, Mississippi, Tulsa. Yes, Florida, California, ooh, Kansas, Fort Lauderdale. Listen, y'all are putting them in here so fast, I can't even keep up. We have Tampa. We have Maryland. Whew. Detroit, yes, yes, I do see Detroit is in number one right now. Yes, you are, yes, you are. Ooh, we are international already. We've got Antigua, yes. Now listen, I don't know if you guys are ready, but if you have not already, we're gonna do a little, because like I said, I, I, I like to talk back to me. You got to talk back to me. Yes, San Francisco, yes, Michigan, Orlando. Now here's the thing. This is what I'm gonna want you to do for me because we are going to be rocking and rolling for this entire experience. And I wanna make sure I'm getting to know you better. If you have not already, inside of your dashboard, you have this, and it's actually a pretty awesome feature that they have, but you have this selfie feature. And if you have not already taken your selfie, make sure you do so. Take your selfie. And when you take your selfie, you get to choose one of the absolutely adorable, you get to choose one of those filters. Make sure you pick your filter. And then I want you to upload it to your story. Yes, right now you want the people to know that not only are you committed, right, to taking hold of your financial future, but I also want you to let the person know who invited you. No matter who it was, tag them to let them know that you are about to take your first trade. We are not learning in secret. We are learning with each other in community because that's the way to do it. Okay, I still see y'all coming in. Yes, everyone from Georgia. All right, Georgia might be in the lead now. Oh, wait, nope, I see another Maryland. If you are excited about this evening, and I know I am, and if you are here, I have a feeling you might just be excited too. But if you are excited about being here this evening, there is a reaction emoji, and I'm just gonna test y'all out. I know y'all didn't know that y'all gonna have a test this early in the evening, but it's just a, it's an easy test too. I want you to go to the reactions button right in your chat and I want you to put a celebratory emoji. I want you to click the emoji because I want to make sure that y'all are putting down what y'all are picking up what I'm putting down. Let me see if, if y'all if y'all know how to do it. Okay, I see some emojis coming in, coming in. Yes, yes, yes. I see them. I see them. Listen, you guys look so good tonight. You have no idea. And what we are going to be going over throughout the entire experience is going to completely transform your life. If you are excited and you are ready, I want you to hit that. Yeah, I see the fire emoji. Okay, we got some hand claps. Yeah, okay, I see some. Tamika, you got fancy. You gave me two emojis. Okay. Yes, Kendra, I see dollar dollar bills. Yes, we are. Now, before we get into everything, right? Because we're going to be learning a lot. We're going to be learning a lot. I need you to remember to be here now. 
You made an investment into your financial future because you are betting on you and you deserve this. So I need you to be here now. I get it. Life is happening all around us. There are so many things that are important. The dog has to be fed. The children have to be walked. Yes, I know exactly what I said. <laughs> the dog has to be fed and the children must be walked. But I want you to make a commitment to yourself for the next just give me two hours. For the next two hours, I want you to focus in on learning, on betting on you, on activating, because you can do this. Because investing does not have to keep being scary. And the one thing that Terry does so, so well, and I know because y'all are here, y'all already know this too, she is going to break it down for us so that not only will we be able to take our first trade, but then we'll be able to take our second, our third, our fourth, and we will be able to build lives that we are not only excited about, but incredibly proud of. So now, if you are ready, for this experience, I want to just one more time. There we go. Yes, Jennifer, and on and on and on and on and on. Yes. If you are excited about Terry, I just want you to tell me, what are you most looking forward to tonight? Before I bring Terry out, because listen, she has been working so hard to ensure that you guys have everything that you need. What are you most excited about? I know personally, I'm excited to learn what an index is. And don't judge me that I don't necessarily know. That's, we not, we're not worried about that, okay? I'm here to learn just like you. What are you most excited about? Ooh, yes, overcoming your fear of taking your first trade, yes. Knowledge to share with your children, absolutely. Because when we learn, we educate the next generation and we completely change things. Isn't that amazing? The fact that tonight you are literally changing the next generation. There you go, Michelle, yes. Learning how to get this money because it matters. Empowering your mind with everything you didn't even know so that you can become more confident. Yes, Jennifer. Doing the thing you didn't know you can do. So now here's the thing. I want us to, and because I can see you, so I'll know if you have not done it, but I want you to do me a favor. I want you to take your right hand, and I want you to put it over your heart. Yes, yes, you have to put it over your heart. Yes, and I can see you. I see you. Yes, put your right hand over your heart. Now, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to breathe in real deep for me. We're going to do it together, okay? Don't worry about if your breath is not that, 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 that good smelling right now. That's okay. We're not worried about that. But I need you to breathe in really, really deep for me with your hand over your heart. We're going to do it on three, okay? One, two, three. You feel that? You feel your chest beating? You feel that heart beating? What that is, is that is purpose. That is purpose and that is opportunity. And every single time that you get to breathe in, we're gonna breathe in again. Every time that you breathe in, that is another opportunity that you have to activate your purpose. And tonight we are going to go, there you go, beating inflation, that's another one. Okay, someone's saying that I am breaking up. So I want you to make sure, because Terry is about to come on, so I want you to make sure that you can hear us clearly, that you have access to all this information. So if you are having any troubles, don't you worry. If anything, go ahead and refresh your computer because we want to make sure you have everything that you need. And then we are going to play some music. But listen, I don't know about y'all, but I love And I saw some of y'all dancing on the way in. We're going to make sure that we have us a good time this evening. Yes, and I see that you guys are still adding in here the reasons that you are most excited to be here. So here's the thing. I want y'all to do me a favor. If you are excited about being here to take your first trade, I want to see y'all clap it up, add an emoji, because we are about to have us a good time. Okay, Christine, I see you. Yes, I see you. Yes, Chandra, I see you. Juanita, I see you. Yes, Victoria, look, I'm proud of you. I see you with the pink glasses, looking as good as you want to look. I told you I can see you. Those are fire. I'm gonna, need, I'm gonna need you to put in my DMs where you got those from. I need those. Listen, y'all ready? What y'all trying to do? Are y'all ready? Yes, let's go. Woo! I want to see y'all hands in the air. Yes, I see you, Christine, with the dog. That's right. He may never be able to make a trade, but he is going to watch you do so. Yes. All right, I 
see y'all. Yes, Carolyn, I see you. Listen, if you guys, and I know you already put it in the chat here, but if you have not already, because I want to make sure that you remember this, you invested tonight into this. Make sure that as you are learning that you are being mindful of the fact that you made an investment and you want to make sure others make an investment too. So make sure you're not screenshotting all of the information in here and sharing it out because we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we are honoring all of the hard work and dedication that Terry has put into this. Because don't worry, if you are a VIP member, you will get access to the recording, so you don't even have to worry about that. And if you are not a VIP, a VIP member just yet, guess what? There's still time. Okay, Jennifer, I see you VIP. There is still time to become a VIP member. Now, throughout this entire evening, when you have questions, I want you to make sure that you write them down because she has done so much work that those questions that you have just might be answered. There you go, Violet, VIP for sure. Now, throughout this entire week, we are going to have some phenomenal, and when I say phenomenal, I do mean phenomenal, some phenomenal guests. Tonight, we will have Anthony O'Neill, then we will have Robert Hartwell. We will have Tiffany, the budget Nista. We will have Rachel Rogers. We will have Dr. Danielle. I need you guys to understand the goodness that you are going to be gaining access to simply because you have invested in yourself and you have joined us this evening. Now, a few more housekeeping rules, right? Because there you go, VIP in the house. I want you to remember, be mindful of your camera. It really does help Terry to be able to give you everything you need by being able to see you. We want to see you. Listen, I see y'all dancing still. What's that sound? Yes, I am extremely excited to be here this evening. Don't forget, I know I told you before, do not forget to take your selfies. I got me a good selfie in there earlier. Now, I'm not going to lie. My hair wasn't all the way done when I took that first selfie. So this, this, this next selfie that I plan to take, I'm gonna be ready, ready. So make sure you have taken your selfies and tag them in your stories. Tag the person who invited you to tell them thank you. Tell them thank you for helping you make an investment that will literally change your entire future and the future of the generations to come. So once you take your selfie and you've tagged whomever it is, I want you to just remember, as much as we want to learn about what you do and how you do it, tonight is not about us learning that, okay? As much as we want to. We're going to save that one for another event. For this particular event, we are going to be learning together. So please do remember, no self-promotion. But we do want you guys to connect. Don't forget, take a look at these are all of the people in your classroom who are learning with you. Like I said, I'm excited about learning what an index is. Again, don't y'all laugh because I don't know what it is yet, okay? I am learning just like you all are. And as you, I see you, Christine, taking the selfie. Listen, me and you gonna have to be besties, okay? I see you, you are everything. I see you, you got the dog dancing, you taking the selfies, I see you, friend. No, but we are going to have us a good time. And don't you worry, you are going to learn exactly how Terry's method is different because she takes things that are challenging to understand, that are, I don't know why, but for some strange reason, folks like to make finance so complicated. I mean, real complicated. But we are going to make sure that by the end of this, not only do you have a basic understanding of the market, but you are no longer afraid because you know how. And you have a system and a strategy which is of utmost importance to reduce your risk. Now listen, we are about to go to a video that I am super excited for you to watch. Remember, if you're feeling a particular energy, if you are excited, I want you to every single time take that reaction emoji and I want you to just click whatever it is that you're feeling because you don't have to wait to, okay, get your excitement out. Every time you're feeling excited or whatever it is, click one of those reaction emojis. And now we are about to go to the video. Missing out on $500,000 is no fun. Hi, I'm Terry Egioma. 
I missed out on big opportunities because I saw the time to invest but didn't know how to do it. But that shouldn't be you. Because after learning to trade and teaching over 35,000 people like yourself, I can safely say you can take control of your financial future now. Take your first trade challenge live with me, Terry Egioma, Grand Champion of Teachable's Creator Challenge, featured in Black Enterprise, Yahoo Finance, ABC, NBC, Good Morning America, for helping everyday people trade stocks for income. I will be leading a live workshop for five straight evenings, joined by five incredible guest speakers. People like Anthony O'Neill, a number one national best-selling author and host of The Table with AO. Robert Hartwell, who is a TV host and executive producer with HGTV and OWN. Rachel Rogers, CEO of Hello7 and the best-selling author of We Should All Be Millionaires. Tiffany, the Budgetista Liche, who has supported millions with her books and blog as the Budgetista and author of the New York Times bestseller, Get Good With Money. And Dr. Darnielle Jervy Harmon, who is an Inc. 5000 CEO and best-selling author of Move to Millions, the proven framework to become a million-dollar CEO with grace and ease instead of hustle and grind. Together, we will be spilling the beans on understanding the stock market, learning about stocks and indexes, opening a brokerage account, how to buy a share of a stock and place your first trade, and selling the stock for a profit. In just five days, you can be buying and selling your first stock. Let's put your money to work. This could be your first step towards long-term financial freedom. Get ready to take your future by the horns. to my classroom. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> hey guys, my name is Terry Gioma and you can call me Miss Terry or Missy Gioma if you want to. This feels so good to be back in a classroom again and I can see all your faces. I see my Aunt Chandra up there. Hey Amy. <laughs> Hey, I see Tiffany. Hey, Tiffany, I see you. Hey, Erica, how you doing? Oh, my goodness, you all look beautiful. LaDawn, Rosalie, oh, my goodness. Well, this is a classroom, and if I was in a classroom, just like I used to do back in the day, I, I wasn't a teacher. I was an assistant principal, but I also was in ministry, right? I would actually have you stand up before you actually took a seat, and I would say, hey, let's set some ground rules. There's only a certain group of people that I let in my class, so let's talk about who those people are. Here are the people. So if you, if you meet these, these rules, then you can come into the classroom. Are you ready? So first of all, can you be positive? There's some reaction buttons. If you can be positive, give me a heart. Give me a heart if you can be positive. Ooh, I'm seeing the hearts. I'm seeing the hearts. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then y'all show the screen. Oh, the hearts are coming up. <laughs> Wonderful. What about proactive? If you're a proactive person, show me in the uh, show me in the reactions. Give me another another emoji. Can you be proactive? What about persistent? If you're persistent, say I am in the chat. I see you, Albert. How you doing today? Hey, Chemo. How you doing? And now, if you can commit to show up, guys, we're going to be together for five days. Today is the first day, the lesson number one, and we're going to learn about the basics of the stock market. But if you can commit to show up, I want you to put commit. I can. I can. And before you come down and sit into the classroom, we're actually going to read this commitment statement together because this is bigger than both you and I. So are you ready? This is what the statement says. I'm going to show it to you, but then we're actually going to read it together. I'm going to tell you the sentence, and then you read it back to me. Okay, you ready? And then Dan and the team, can y'all put up everybody in the background so they can see themselves? All right, here's the commitment statement. So it says, I, and then say your name, I, Terry Gioma, commit to improve myself this week. You guys... I don't see your mouse moving. I can see y'all. Glenda, Miss Glenda, <laughs> do you commit to improve yourself this week? Okay, thank you. Hey, Mug, you have a beautiful smile. Beautiful. Okay, I will dedicate time. Miss Yvonne, you're just looking at me. 
Oh, is it okay? Oh, but you got it. You got it. Okay. I will dedicate time each lesson to show up for myself. Hey, Harriet, how you doing? To show up for myself. You got it, Miss Regina. Yes. Wonderful. And my family. I'm going to show up for myself and my family and my future legacy. Yes. If you if you can do that, I want you to put commit in the in the chat. Type commit in the chat. I see some hands. Good. You're saying I will. I love it. I love this. I'm saying commit. Y'all, this is the coolest thing ever. I've been wanting to do a studio like this for the longest time. I've seen it. Dean and a lot of other people have these huge stages with everybody in the background. And you all look absolutely beautiful. Look at y'all. I love it. OK, now that you've made the commitment, y'all, I'm about to trip in these shoes. I hope y'all like my outfit. Um, <laughs> now that you've made the commitment, I'd like you to come and take a seat inside the classroom. You can now take a seat. And we will get started. Some of you guys are probably like, who in the world is this girl? Who is this teacher? Well, my name is Terry Gioma. I am an eight-figure earner. But more than that, I'm in ministry. I'm an ordained minister and preacher. I was in ministry and education for over 10 years. Then, you guys know my story from the video, but then my last job was assistant principal of an elementary school. But you can see it started making me cry in a bathroom. Y'all see them little buckets? Oh, wait, can y'all see me? Can y'all see these slides? Sh nod yes, can you see the slides? Okay. Y'all see my face with them buckets? Back in the day when I was assistant principal, like this was my main job. I had to go run to Walmart almost every day. Anybody else here in education and know, know the runs to Walmart? Yes. <laughs> Um, but it got kind of tiring for me, so I decided, you know what, I actually want to travel. I need to find a way to actually live my dreams and travel outside of the school. So I started trading on the side, and it became a place where I can actually start traveling and afford my travels from trading stock. And while I was traveling, people started asking me to teach them how to trade. So this is actually my first class. I actually did a class in Thailand, and you can see it my first class in Thailand. Then I did another class because the people I was traveling with say, Terry, that was really good. We wanted you to teach that to us again. So then I did a class and this one was in Vietnam. Y'all see me reaching over trying to show them how to read a candlestick. And then I got to Dallas. I was finishing up seminary and everybody said, oh, well, we know. We know you're going to teach us. So this is the class in Dallas. If you were in that class, I might see some of the people. If you were there, anybody was there in that original class? I see you. I see some hands. That was 2018, y'all. And then I went on. It became one of the best-selling courses in the world, actually, on investing. I was on The Breakfast Club. I was on New York, in New York Times Square or in Times Square on the NASDAQ board. I was on Good Morning America. And now I've taught over 35,000 people how to trade and invest in stocks. And with you all here, we'll teach over 100,000 people how to invest. And I cannot wait to serve you. This is my ministry, and I cannot wait to serve you. So are you ready? Are you ready to learn? Because here we go. So you're in the classroom now. <laughs> so you're in the classroom now, and this is our first lesson. So lesson number one, we're talking about the market overview. Now let me first tell you, the funnest thing about this presentation, usually we do it on like, on like a regular Zoom. The funnest thing about this presentation is I get to literally be like a teacher. And when I was in education, we could use any asset class we wanted. Like if we saw a video here or an image here, we could use that to make you understand or help you to understand. So you're going to see a lot of like videos and extra things that I've just found and I'm helping to, to help you understand. But before we get started right here, I actually do want to ask, how many of you all have never Never invested before or never traded before? Will you put in the chat anybody else here that's brand new? Me, never, me. Okay, good. Brand new, never, newbie, new, new, first time. Okay, good. So if I go for the very basics today, then that would really help you all out, right? 
I know I talked to Tiffany the Budgetista and Rachel Rogers, and they were like, Terry, we need you to go basic, basic, basic. We don't know none of this stuff, <laughs> and we need you to teach us. So let's start then. One, for, okay, so a couple of people say, I've tried, but yes, basic. Yes, indeed, yes, definitely. Okay, good, <laughs> good. All right, so let's start first with the real basics. What is a stock? The basics. Y'all, literally, a stock is just when a company wants to raise money, they will literally decide, you know what, I'm going to sell a piece of my company, and that's how I'll raise money for myself. So say, think about Uber. I love thinking about Uber because they've expanded so much. So Uber first, they were just driving cars. And they said, you know what, we have this idea. We think that people might want to share a ride to work. So if we, get some couple, if we get a couple people to share a ride, that's a business, right? And then it started happening. They started growing like crazy. And then they said, you know what, we want to expand. We want to expand internationally. We want to expand into Uber Eats, but we need more capital. So then they went to an investment bank. At the investment bank, they said, how much is our company worth? If we wanted to sell some, some of our company to make money, how much would we need to, to sell it for? So the investment bank then does some calculations. They do some calculations, and they say, you know what? Your company is worth this much if you break it up into this many shares and actually let the, pu the, the public buy those shares, you can raise money. So that's called an initial public offering. They decide to split up the company into shares, and then they offer them to the public, and that's how the company raises money. So that's what a stock is. A stock is just a share of a company, and literally, the company uses it to raise money. Now, Netflix did this really, really cool documentary, and um, I think because we're breaking it down really simple, I'm going to show you what I just said, but I'm going to repeat it through the video. So check this video out real quick, and then see if you can better understand what we mean by companies raising money through selling shares. That is literally what a stock is. It's not anything like super scary or intimidating. They're just selling pieces of their company to raise money. All right, here we go. Check the video out. To understand what the stock markets are measuring, it helps to imagine a very simple business, like a lemonade stand. Jill is killing it. But I'm thinking bigger. I tried to get a loan, but the bank said it was too risky. The rich investors weren't buying. Jill has another option. She can go public, giving anyone who wants to the chance to invest in her business through something called an initial public offering, or IPO. Investors pay a certain amount, say a dollar, to own a small part or share of Jill's business. Jill sells a bunch of shares. And I grow my lemonade empire! Right. Jill can put that money towards opening new lemonade stands, which means more profits. Jill can put some of those profits towards developing new products. She can also give some of that money back to her investors. These are called dividends. She doesn't have to do this. But it does help get people excited about her company and more likely to buy her stock, like Sam. He was sick on IPO day, but he thinks, Jill is the smartest girl in the whole world, and I know this lemonade stand thing is gonna be huge. So he offers to buy some shares from one of the original investors for twice what she paid for them. He's thinking, if Jill keeps this up, I can sell these shares for even more later on. That's the stock market. It's people buying and selling tiny pieces of companies based on how much they think those pieces will be worth in the future. Except in real life, it's happening thousands of times a second all over the world. Wasn't that cute? Isn't that cute? <laughs> Now, put into the chat real quick for all those who are brand new. Now that you saw that video and you heard me explain it, yeah, I'm, I'm a real teacher today. Uh, check for understanding. What do you think the stock market is? Now that you heard me explain it and you heard us, uh, heard the video. And actually, let's, let's even be simpler. What is a stock? Put into the chat. What is a stock? Isn't that cute? Marlene says, what a great video. Great, I'm seeing company funding, a piece of a company, pieces of a company, portions of a company. Keep going. 
You can't be lazy in this class. You can't let everybody else answer and you not answer. So go on and start typing. Good, part of a company. And if you, and just think about this one in your head, why would someone want to sell a piece of their company? You know, this is hard work. You built this up. Why would you want to sell a part of your company? Good. I'm seeing raise money, expand. Expansion, raise capital, yes. Now here's a trick question. Now what is the stock market? I asked you what a stock is, and I asked you about why raising capital, that was all correct. Now what is the actual market though? Mm, I'm seeing some answers, but I think some of y'all got stumped on that one. So let's talk about it. This was the most important part of that video, and I bet you might have missed it. At the very end, you saw a girl um, exchanging a share to, for another person. There was like a couple kids, and one kid had, had a stock, and she had bought it from the company, and then she then decided to sell it to someone who wasn't there. Right? He didn't have the original stock. She got to then decide how much the stock was worth that she owns and sell it to the other kid. They made a deal and they made an exchange. That's the actual stock market. It's a market. So many people think, and let me show you this, so many people think that when you are in the stock market, you're actually interacting with the company itself. So I see in a lot, like there was a short sale of some company a long time ago, and everybody was saying in the comments and in the commentary online, oh man, those short sellers are really hurting the company. A short sale just means they were hoping that the stock would go down, right? When you're in the stock market, you're actually not exchanging with the company anymore. It's just buyers and sellers. So these, these people are not interacting with the company at all, actually. They're talking to the other buyers that want to buy the company shares, and then there's people that want to sell the company shares. So the market is literally just a, excuse me, a negotiation between buyers and sellers. That's all that it is. It's a market. Now, when you think about that in your head, what other markets can you think of in the world? What's another market where you're having a negotiation between buyers and sellers? Let me see. Yep, I'm seeing farmer's market, flea market, auto market. Yeah, negotiation between buyers and sellers. That's a great one. Housing market, a garage sale. The stock market is literally a market like any other market where you're negotiating. In Nigeria, I always talk about this story, but in Nigeria, I had to go to the market with my dad, and we were negotiating on cloth. It was my grandfather's funeral. Um, some, you know, moment of silence, but it was my grandma, grandfather's funeral, and we went and we had to get cloth for everybody in our family. What happens in, in my tradition of, of the funeral, every, um, every child of the family has to get cloth for each of their children. So my dad has 10 kids. He had to get cloth for each of his kids. And then they had this ceremony where everybody put into the pile all of their cloth. And then you were able to see, like visually see, the impact that my grandfather had because you saw all of the cloth stacked up, right? It was a really cool experience. But when we went to the market, we had to negotiate on the price of the cloth. And I remember my dad going in and him being like, look, we need to get all this cloth. This is what I want to pay. And the lady on the other side, she sells the cloth. She's like, no, that's too low. I want this price. Now, y'all know I'm Nigerian, so we negotiate on everything. This was like literally a good, I feel like, 20, 30-minute discussion of price. My dad wanted low. My, the, the lady with the cloth wanted high. And they just negotiated back and forth. That is literally what is happening in the stock market. I want you to, I want to hone this in because this is not a grocery store. 
Oftentimes, when I see newbies or new people go into the stock market, they think whatever price is listed for this stock, share of a company, that's what I'll pay. They say it's $10, I'm going to pay $10. But you have to remember this is a market. If you're the buyer, you can actually ask for a lower price. You can say, no, I want this stock at $9.50. And then the seller, of course, is going to say, no, I want to sell it to you at $10.50. 70 cents, but you negotiate back and forth, and that's the price that you see on, on like the screen that says the last price of this stock, right? So that's the stock market. It's a market. This lady, she sold her stock, but it's, she's not the, in it anymore. These two kids are the negotiators now. Now the question becomes, and I hope, are you learning? Put, put yes, I'm learning if you're learning something new into the chat. Okay, good, I'm seeing lots of yeses, you're learning. That's the key of this. This whole thing is about just you learning. Wonderful. So now, the next question is, well, Terry, okay, I get that this is a market, people are buying and selling, but now how do the stock prices move? Great question, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so the way that the stock prices move are based on how many people want to buy the stock and how many people want to sell the stock. Right? And then it's based on what price they want to actually pay. If you have a lot of buyers and they're willing to pay a lot of money, it's going to push the price up. And if you have a lot of sellers and they're willing to uh, sell the company, and like just think there's a lot of sellers, they're willing to sell the company, it'll push the price down. So let's think of where, this, where we've seen this before in our lives, personally. I have seen it with Beyonce tickets because I am a fan. <laughs> Shout out to all of her new albums. Um, but just think about if you were going on, on tour and you wanted to get a ticket for Beyonce, at, the, at one point, a ton of people wanted to buy the tickets, so they pushed the price of the tickets up, right? But let's say you went to another concert and it was someone unknown, nobody really liked them. They might come in and say, oh, we want to charge $100 for our concert. If nobody wants to buy it, you're going to see the tickets come down and down and down in price, right? So a lot of buyers push the price up. A lot of sellers push the price down. Basically, this is an auction, right? I want to give you this example so you can kind of get, a, get an idea. I'm going to show you this video of Christie's. In Christie's, um, that's an that's a art, art place. I'm not super familiar yet because I'm not at this level, but I'm going to be there soon. But they sold this painting. It was this one. I'll, I'm going to show you in the video. Watch. But um, let me just set it up for you so you know what you're looking at. So they sold this painting, and the painting um, was sold for, I'm not even going to tell you, but just know, like you're going to be impressed when you see this video, just know the painting was put on auction, and then you had buyers coming out, and they were pushing the price up. Just imagine that this painting was a stock. This is literally what's happening in the stock market. Okay? Okay, watch the video. Here you go. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, we move to the Leonardo da Vinci, the Salvatore Mundi, the masterpiece by Leonardo, Christ the Savior, previously in the collections of three kings of England. At 90 million. 95, and I go, one turn over here. 110. I have it at 110 million. He'll give me 120. Give me 140. 130 million. 140 million is bid at 140 million with Alex at 140 million. 150 might take it at 140 million holding at the moment. Where is that? 150. Welcome at 150 million on the left. 160 might take it at 150 million. Many places still. 160 is bid back to Alex at 160 million. At 190 million. Give me 200. 190 is bid. 200 million is bid at 200 million. At 200 million. 200 million, please. 200 million is bid. Give me 10. At 200 million is bid. 200 million is here, currently hanging with Alex on my right, at 200 million for the Leonardo, at 200 million looking for 210. Sir, are you coming back in? At 240 million, currently. 245 million is bid, at 245 million. 250 million is bid. It's back to Francois de Porter, at 266 million dollars. 268 million, you heard it, ladies and gentlemen. Back to Alex, at 268, are we all out here? It's at 270 million, the hand goes up. 270 against you. Alex, would you like 275? Might do the trick. 270 million, back to Francois de Porter. Louis, are you out? You all done? Want to pop back in with a five? 
280. 280 million. The increment of 10 million, ladies and gentlemen, at 280 million. With Alex. At 280 million dollars. Are we all done? Maybe not. Don't take the photograph quite yet. 286 million. 286 million. Will you give me 290, Alex? 300. I thought so. 300 million. Isn't that crazy? 300 million. How much do y'all think it finally went for? <laughs> I see you guys in the chat, you're like, what insane, oh my gosh, right? Oh, that's a good one too. Can't wait to see us be able to buy some art. Good, oh yes, I'm saying 500. Cheryl, you are right, it went for $400 million. And it was because the, the people kept bidding the price up. The price of that art is based on how much the people wanted to pay for it. As long as there was someone willing to bid and pay for that, that item, then that's what the price was worth. That's the same thing happening in the stock market. As long as someone is willing to pay more for the stock, the stock prices will go up. But as soon as people are not wanting to pay anymore, then it'll stop. That's what's pushing and driving the stock prices. Isn't that so interesting? I just love it. All right, so now let's talk about the history. And I know we were running a little late tonight, so I'm gonna keep going. We have five days of lessons, but I'm gonna try to make sure that every single day is super packed so that you're learning. By the end of the week, you will be buying your first stock. So you'll be the one putting in your bid and buying that Christie's artwork it's gonna be the, the New York Stock Exchange, it'll be a different stock, but that'll be you. You'll be putting in your bid and you'll be buying a stock in the stock market by the end of the week. Isn't that cool? I know, I know. Okay, so now let's talk about history. A brief history of the stock market and we will keep this brief. You're gonna see a whole bunch of words on the back of the screen, but let me break this down for you, okay? First things first, a whole bunch of words on the back of the screen, but I'm gonna break it down. The part that I love the most is this. Did you know that the stock market as we know it today, which is called the, the, biggest, the biggest exchange, it's called the New York Stock Exchange, it was started underneath a tree. Yes, a tree, I know. So what happened was, this is me and my, my words, I'm gonna rephrase the whole thing, right? When you talk to somebody, else, your financial advisor, and you give them this story, then they might, they might look at you kind of crazy, but this is my version of the story, okay? All right, so see what happened was, <laughs> no, so here's what happened. Back in the day, they, we told you there were companies that were starting to sell parts of their company in order to raise capital, right? So companies were starting to do that. Now they had stocks out there and there were brokers that started to come up and say like, okay, well, I'll help you sell your stock. I'll help you sell that share. I know Billy Bob down the street, because remember back in the day, all these people lived in the same area in New York, all the wealthy people, right? So, you know, James, he's been looking to buy a share of that company. I'll help you. And then there'd be another stockbroker and he'd say, oh, you know what? I have a friend too. He owns a share of GE. Let's just pick a random company, right? And he's willing to share his share or he's willing to sell his share. So these stockbrokers started to come up, but you never could tell who was real and who wasn't. It's kind of like on social media nowadays where people are trying to, you know, teach and do all these things and you don't know who's, who to follow, who to know, what to do. So what they did is 24 of these stockbrokers came together and they made an agreement. It's called the Buttonwood Agreement, okay? They said, look, I trust you and you trust me, I know you're legit, I know he's legit, I know he, you know, is a good man too. The 24 of us are gonna make a deal together. We're only going to trade stocks with each other. If you have somebody who wants to sell some of their stock, you gotta come meet us under this tree every day and we will only work with each other. And then they also said, and to make it fair, we're going to set the price. You can only charge this much in order to sell your shares. That's literally the agreement. It had two, two parts. One, we're only going to trade with each other. And then two, we have to set the price. 
those brokers eventually started to grow. There was another stock exchange in Philadelphia, but eventually the New York Stock Exchange became the biggest one. They, they started letting in more brokers, but they would do it by seats. It's almost like a sorority or fraternity, right? You, they would decide who got in, and this was like a bunch that said, we're only going to work with each other. They eventually grew, and they are now the New York Stock Exchange. Where that tree is is where the New York Stock Exchange is now housed. Isn't that amazing? Like, the history of it is so cool, but it's really basic. They just wanted to make sure that everything was equal for everyone who invested in traded stocks. Now we have stock exchanges all around the world. So here are some of the big ones, and it looks like some of the formatting might have gotten off on my slide, but let's just move to here. The most relevant ones that we, we talk about and have today are New York, and I say we for U.S., but shout out to all my European, all my Canadians here. There are stock exchanges around the world. So we have the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, London, Toronto, Australia, and Hong Kong. Those are some of the biggest and the ones that we talk about the most. The ones that we see often are New York and NASDAQ. The New York Stock Exchange hosts most of the companies. Over 90% of the companies in the United States are traded on the New York Stock Exchange. The NASDAQ hosts most of the technology companies. And this exchange is literally like a mall. If you were to think about a mall, Back home has lots of stores in it. This is literally these these um, exchanges are literally like a mall. They say, "Come in here. You can do your business and exchange in here. This is where we hold, hold stocks. This is where the market lies for stocks, right?" And then New York says, "Well, we got ours." London says, "That's cool. You good? We got ours over here, and this is where we in London <laughs> do our exchanging, right?" So that's, that's how these exchanges work. Here are the times. I realized, and sorry, this uh, slide looks a little off. Let me just tell you the times. I realized that as a new trader, you may not even know what time the exchanges open and close. So the New York Stock Exchange, it opens from 9.30 a.m. Eastern to 4 p.m. Eastern. The NASDAQ, same thing, 9.30 a.m. Eastern to 4 p.m. Eastern. London, similar times, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. BST. And then Toronto, 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. Australia, 10 a.m. Look at them. I like that they get to sleep in. This is good. Okay, Australia is 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. their time. And then Hong Kong, also, they have a little break in the middle. You see that? They have a lunch break. So they go Monday through Friday from 9.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. Then they have a little break and then 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Hong Kong. Now, some of you guys may be thinking, but Terry, I have a friend who trades Forex, and they can trade 24 hours. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you brought it up. There are different asset classes in the stock exchanges, right? One asset class and the one that I invest in is stocks. We call them equities. That's companies. Anytime you invest in stocks or options, you're dealing with companies. But there's different assets that are exchanged. And we, we can go through all the details. We know that there's been lots of different things that have been traded in markets <laughs> over the years, right? But a couple big ones that we think about are futures. Futures are commodities. So it would be something like corn, soybeans, um, oil. Those are all the futures market. If you wanted to change, exchange currencies, then you would do the Forex market. So think about what's the difference between the United States dollar and the euro? What's the exchange rate there? You can actually trade that. It's called the Forex market. You also have the crypto market. That's been a big deal lately. And you'll see it often now on CNBC. That's a money channel that talks about money all the time. That's another asset class. So excuse me, depending on your asset class, the, the times also change. Futures and Forex often have 24 hours. They have a couple days where they're off or a couple hours where they're off, but they have different hours. These hours are for equities and companies. You guys still with me? All right, I know this is a lot, but now that you've heard about the exchanges, I wanted to show you a cute video of what the inside of the New York Stock Exchange looks like. I had a chance to go visit, and I wanted to show you what, what happened. Hey, 
Hey guys, Terry Dioma here from Trade and Travel. I am so excited for what we have in store today. I'm gonna get a chance to interview Peter Tuckman, and we'll get a chance to walk around the New York Stock Exchange and even see the opening bell. I am so excited for today. I'll see you inside. literally having the day of my life right now. I am in the New York Stock Exchange, getting to see behind the scenes of what I do all the time online. big takeaways that I had from visiting the New York Stock Exchange is one, the people are so friendly. Everyone was so welcoming. Peter Tuckman, who's the Einstein of Wall Street, he was so welcoming. Trade Moss, his company, thank you all so much for letting me come. So amazing. They were so willing to teach and show me, okay, how, these are how the orders work and this is how the, the screen works and this is where we do this and that. Just so sweet. And I also learned my big takeaway number two is that the benefit of having people on the ground and on the floor in the stock exchange is seeing the buy and sell orders. They get to see the order flow, which is a great advantage as a trader. And then my third takeaway is that this is something that I still love and I still want to be a part of. It, it, it expanded my mind in ways that are simply amazing. So thank you, New York Stock Exchange, for letting me come and visit today. It was a huge pleasure. Shout out to CNBC. I took a picture with Steve Weiss. Like, thank you guys for welcoming me and allowing me to come. I just wanted to thank the New York Stock Exchange, Peter Tuffman, and Trade Moss for allowing me to come and give me a tour of what I see every day. So thank you all so much. This has been a day like the day of my life. I just really appreciate it. And shout out to CNBC as well. Thank you guys. Bye. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? I had so much fun at the New York Stock Exchange. Like to me, my brain started expanding. I felt like I was like super smart. I got to see all of the computers, but literally they're doing in the stock exchange what we can do online. So the things that you're about to learn this week on how to actually buy a share and sell a share, they are doing that, but we get to do it too. That's the beautiful part. There's no more gatekeeping. There's no more, you know, packed between brokers and, you know, only these brokers can come. There's no set prices. Now, when you make a trade, and you'll learn more about this on Wednesday when we talk about broker brokerage accounts. Now, when you make a trade, oftentimes it's zero commission. It doesn't cost anything. I bet the people, those 24 brokers from the Buttonwood, I bet they are just rolling over like, are you serious? It's free? We used to charge a ton of money to be able to make a trade, but now you can do it for free. So I am excited. I hope that you learned a lot today. We're going to move into our next section, but let's do a quick little recap. There are two big exchanges in the United States, the New York Stock Exchange, which you just saw the video of, and the NASDAQ. I saw some of you ask questions like, what does the NASDAQ stand for? So y'all, the truth is a big word. I don't know. I can't remember. But what I think of is tech companies. So Facebook, Apple, when they decided to go public, do an initial public offering, we're doing a recap, right? When they decided to do an initial public offering and sell parts of their company, they chose the NASDAQ Stock Exchange because they're a technology company. Uber did the same, right? And then when you go on CNBC, one of my friends told me, she said, Terry, you always tell us to do this thing on CNBC, and I have no idea what you're talking about. So that's actually part of your homework tonight. In order to start seeing financial news, one of the big apps that we use is called uh, CNBC. It's like the money channel of the NBC network. I want you to download it on your cell phone. And what it'll do is it'll start giving you notifications about companies. 
Now we're going to do more with that tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to talk about indexes, which are book buckets of companies. If you see here on the screen, you can see on your screen, but I'm going to point it out here. Down here at the bottom, where it says the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ, those are buckets of companies. And we're going to go deeper into that tomorrow. But those buckets of companies actually represent the majority of the stock market. So the Dow is 30 companies that, that are like the top in the United States. The S&P is the top 500 companies in the United States. And the NASDAQ is the top 100 tech companies. So we're going to go more into that tomorrow, so make sure that you're here. We're going to go even deeper, but this is just a little recap of some of the things that we've seen and talked about today. You see their crude oil? That's part of the futures market. So once again, your homework tonight is to go download the CNBC app. You're going to need it for tomorrow. We're going to talk about watch lists, indexes, and so much more. And just know that be with me the, the next five days. I literally want to teach you how to buy and sell your first share. There's no extra gimmick here or anything else. You all already know about our trade and travel program. So like we're just here to teach. And I can't wait for you to hear from my brother, Anthony, who's coming up in a second, because we realized that I can teach you all the techno technicals and all the things to do, but unless you get over your money fears, you won't actually do it. So hopefully you'll be with me every day. I'm going to teach you the technical parts of taking, buying and selling your first share. And then we have guest speakers each night that will help you with your fear. So I hope you had a good time. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> Go ahead and tell me on the screen. Oh, good, we can see you all again. Go ahead and uh, put a heart up on the screen if you enjoyed tonight and you learned something new. Put a heart up. And tell me in the comments one thing that was new. Even if you've been investing for a long time, I think, like, I didn't even know that the Dow had 30 companies until I had been investing for 10 years. There's some, some things that you just never know. And I'll let, I'll let Alicia come on back out as we transition to Anthony. And then, <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. I'm going to give you a hug because the way you were educating me, I was, listen, y'all, I took all the notes. How many, how many, how many pages of notes y'all got already? I have at least seven back there. Okay, four. I see four. All right, is that six? Oh, okay, she has four as well. Listen. Oh, I love it. Two pages of notes. Oh, I love it. Listen, yes. All the notes. Uh, Go Beatrice. Uh, She's a, all the notes. I have all the notes. Yes, I have all the notes. And now, I want to see how good they were listening. Okay. Okay, this is it. I need y'all to get serious about this thing, okay? This is our first mini test. Already. Where was the stock market founded? Where was it? Let's see if y'all were listening. Not the city. Oh, somebody said it. Under a tree. Yes. yes. Woo, yes. <laughs> you guys are learning. Got it. <laughs> I'm so excited. Listen, that just gave me such joy. <laughs> and now the too. last question. Okay. okay. All right, Terry, you got to keep your eyes open. I'm ready. I'm looking. I'm looking at ready. everybody. I'm looking at the chat. We got, we got this. How many brokers were under that tree? Oh. Yeah. Oh, they are coming in. Let oh, y'all were listening. Y'all were listening, listening. Let me find out y'all <laughs> was paying attention. I love this. I, I love, love it. I love this, too. Listen, I don't know about <laughs> you, Terry. I know you do this every day, but for somebody who does not do this every day, I was getting so excited to know that, what do we say? My commitment to improve myself this week and my future legacy is something that I can take and I can keep learning. Yes. I can keep growing. And it's not stopping. It is not stopping. Terry, thank you so much. My pleasure. I'll see the VIP later with Anthony. See y'all later. Bye, guys. <laughs> First of all, give yourselves a hand clap because 
don't worry, she's going to come back, I promise. <laughs> I promise. And if you are a VIP, you will gain access to ask those intimate questions because we are going to be getting all into Mr. Anthony O'Neill's business. And if you are a VIP, you want to make sure, and if you're not just yet, don't worry, you have an opportunity to do so. We will provide the link for you so that you can join us in that intimate conversation. But for everyone, we will have him to come and just to give us a little bit more information because here's the thing. The man who thinks he can't and the man who thinks he can, they are both right. Everything that you are learning here today, not only is it possible for you, but you can learn more. Your mind can expand. You are fully capable of learning this information, of taking your first trade, and then doing it again and again and again and again. So now Anthony, he is the host of The Table with Anthony O'Neill, and he is also the author of Debt Free Degree and The Graduate Survival Guide. I don't know about y'all, but I am so excited because he is about to get us all the way together because your mind has to arrive before everything else does. So, Anthony O'Neill, can you come on? Welcome come to the in. stage. Oh! Yo, man, how has it been tonight? It has been phenomenal. And I, I coming in hot. Like, I, I felt that. I felt that. I felt it. Y'all got to come in hot, man, especially when you're here with Terry. I mean, she's just an amazing one woman of God, too. She just has a passion to help not just people to take their first trade, but to really build wealth for their families. And so I'm just honored to be here. Listen, and we are honored to have you because I already know you about to get us right on together. Yeah, we're going to have a good time. I promise you that a, much. A good time in the Lord. I promise you that much. Listen, well, I'm not going to hold the people away from Man, you. Listen. I will see you soon. See you soon. Thank you so much. All right, now. <clears throat> What's going on, family? Listen here. Um, uh, it was maybe about, I want to say, seven years ago. Seven years ago. My father and I had the opportunity to purchase something. It was a house, right? It was a house. And when I was purchasing, I had the opportunity to purchase this home, right? Um, it was only $213,000 to purchase this home. Y'all, I'm going to be honest with you as a single man. Can I be real with you? It's Terry's place. Um, it was on the beach. It was beautiful. Single man sitting on the beach, overlooking the sand, seeing all the ladies run through with their little joggers on, looking good. I didn't really care about the brothers running through with the shirts all off because their six pack and their chest was looking better than mine. I didn't care about that. I only cared about what was happening with the ladies. Could you imagine waking up every morning on the beach, hearing the waves, hearing God's creation, seeing your beautiful eyesight to whatever that is with you. It was a brand new condominium complex that was going up. And one of my realtor friends called me and said, hey, man, we got this great opportunity. I was like, all right, bet, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. And, and, and I couldn't see it. Watch this. I couldn't see the potential of the condo, but I saw the potential of the view. My father was with me, and we were talking. And they said it would be about $213,000. You got to put down 20%. But I couldn't see the, the building. I could only see where the building would be, but I didn't know how it was going to look. I didn't know what was going to happen, what was going to do. And I said, hey, man, let me think about it. I went on, and I kept thinking about it. My dad was like, hey, man, we should go look into this. We should go look into that. The, the realtor called me back, and he said, Anthony, it's, it's, it's selling like hotcakes. I was like, well, can I see an example of something? He was like, we don't have an example yet because they haven't started building it yet. But they're selling out, and I do not want you to miss this opportunity because of fear of something you cannot see. Uh-oh. 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 I'm going to say it one more time. He said, Anthony, I do not want you to miss out on something that you could not see today but in my shoes, as an expert in this place, this is where you want to be. But I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it, y'all. But what I saw was the view. But the view wasn't enough 
to get me to sign on the dotted line. I said, hey, man, let me, let me keep thinking about it. I kept talking. Watch this. Two people who don't even have real estate. I kept talking to people who do not even have any money. I kept talking to people, oh, my gosh, who live in an apartment complex, don't even own a home. I had all the people telling me, I wouldn't do that. You don't know what's going to happen. It's a condo. You can't sell it. Oh, that's not a good investment. Oh, you couldn't do that. Pause. How many of us have people in our ears right now who are saying, hey, I wouldn't do that. That sounds like a scam. Oh, I wouldn't do that. The stock market is not safe. Oh, I wouldn't do that because of X, Y, Z. Oh, I wouldn't do that. But are they even qualified to tell you what you should see and what you should do? If I'm going to be transparent with you tonight, that was one of the dumbest mistakes I've ever made in my life. I passed up on that property. $213,000 property, a beginner condo. It wasn't a top of the line condo inside of there, none of that. This was pre-COVID, you guys. I want you to hear me, this was pre-COVID, you guys. I was back in Florida. I was speaking out there. I went out there to get something to eat. I called my guy, I said, man, how are you doing? I'm in town. He came out, he had dinner with me. He said, hey, yo, you remember the condo that I gave you five years ago that you thought about and you passed up on because you could not see it? I was like, yeah. Do you remember where it was? I was like, no, it was five years ago. It was pre-COVID, bro. I'm alive. I'm just grateful I'm alive. He was like, it's right next door, Anthony. I looked. I looked up. I said, what? Do you know how much that same condo was going for today? $850,000. I want you to really just, just think about that. Think about that. Five years ago, an investment for $250,000 with 20% down could have warranted me $850,000 today. Actually, that was last year when we had the conversation. This year is probably at 900 to a million. But I procrastinated. But I listened to the wrong people in my ear. I was listening to YouTubers who don't even have $1,000 in an emergency fund, but they want to comment on everybody else. I was listening to people who, who, who do not have a relationship with Christ to understand the power of faith. I was listening to the wrong people. Watch this. Can I be real with you? My father in that season was the wrong person for me to listen to. Procrastination and fear is expensive. VIP, I want you to put that in the chat. Type that in the chat. I want you all to write that down. Procrastination and fear is expensive. Because I procrastinated, be, be, because I, 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 I was saying, let me think about it. Let me, let me, let me work on it. Let, let, me, let me think about it. $250,000, but let's be real. I'm the money guy. Y'all know me. I'm the money guy. Thank you, VIP. I see you. Let's be real. I'm the money guy. $250,000 out of my pocket five years ago. I would have put down about $30,000 out of my pocket. Mortgage payment would have been right around $2,000 at that time. So over five years, I would have put maybe about if I did a 30-year mortgage, maybe about $60,000 into the hole. So because I procrastinated $850,000 minus $60,000 out of my pocket, it cost me $790,000. 
So what am I saying? Now, some of us, the reason why we're not really where we want to be financially, the reason why our investment portfolio is not where it should be, the reason why we're not into that home, the, the reason why we're not into and getting what we desire is not because the lack of resources, it's because of the lack of faith in the decisions that we need to be making. It's, it's the lack of faith, watch this, into yourself. And the reason why a lot of us lack faith in ourselves is because we're asking the wrong thing. We're seeking after the wrong thing. Procrastination and fear, you guys, is expensive. I'm reminded of the scripture when God approached Solomon and said, hey, man, I've made you king here. You know, ask me for whatever you want. And some of you all know the scripture. If you don't believe in faith, I respect that. But I'm a man of faith, and I'm going to give you a little bit of Bible. I'm going to give you a little bit of Bible tonight with a little bit of the AO version of the Bible. I call it the black version of the Bible. God says, Solomon, hey, ask me for whatever you want. It's like genie in a bottle, right? Like, hey, you got three wishes, ask. I want you to think about this. What would you ask God for, <laughs> right? What would you ask God for if he said, ask me for whatever you want, and I will give it to you? When I get to heaven, I want to holler at Peter. I want to holler at Moses, and I want to holler at Solomon. Because I'm like, if God asked me, <clears throat> For whatever, I want to be like, yo, God, listen here, send me a wife. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Send me, send me something. Now, Solomon said, God, you've made me, you know, you made me this person. Here. I'm not going to ask for anything. I just want wisdom and knowledge. The reason why I told Terry I will come tonight is because thousands of you all signed up tonight to get wisdom and knowledge. Y'all say, yo, I want to learn how to make my first trade. I want to learn how to invest into the stock market. I want to learn, you know, I'm a beginner in the stock market. So I don't, I don't want to ask for a million dollars to trade today. I want to learn how do I get the wisdom and knowledge first so that I can have a million, so that I can take a million and then go invest that correctly. And this is why I am here tonight to encourage you. I'm not going to teach you about money and a stock market tonight because that's Terry's job. I want to encourage you all tonight that to be here every single night this week. Because if you don't get the wisdom and knowledge, you're not going to get the money. You're not going to get the home that you desire. You're not going to get the things that God has for you down the road. I don't want you to invest wrong if you're not getting the right information. And what I love about the story in my great book is that not only did God give him the wisdom and the knowledge, but he also gave him the million dollars. He also gave him the influence. He also gave him to the one million TikTok followers. He also gave him the million dollars to invest into the stock market. He also gave him influence. But how many of us have made a decision and missed out on a great opportunity because of fear. Put in the chat right now. I'm, I'm a preacher at heart. I'm not going to preach at y'all with the biblical standpoints. But put in the chat, VIP. And this is why some of y'all should be in up, 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 upgrading to VIP. Because right now I'm just having a good conversation. Put in the chat. Let me know. And I didn't say put VIP. Well, y'all good in VIP. Y'all just type VIP. I love you. I love you, <laughs> but put in the chat yes or no if you've missed out on the fear. Put yes if you've missed out on a fear before. Put no, I've never missed out on something because of fear. Okay, all right. Stop in the chat. Stop in the chat. I'm gonna see the chat. I'm gonna see the chat. Stop. Don't type nothing. See if y'all can listen. 
Thank you. Y'all listening? I see. Don't type nothing in the chat. I got another question for you. How many of you feel as if, actually, as a matter of fact, I'm not even looking at the chat. I want to look at the general. Y'all, general people, wave at me. Just, just wave at me real quick so I can see you. I see you, Miss Monique. I see you. Miss Donna, I see you. Miss Cheryl, I see you. Yo, Charlie, I see you, brother. I see you, boy. I see, I see you. Oh, I, I may say this wrong. I'm going to say your last name. Miss Trusty, I love that clock behind you. I see you, my friend. I see you. I want you in the general, VIP, I want you to, to wave at me if you've missed out on things, if you've missed out on money because of procrastination or fear. Wave at me before. Wave at me. Let me see. There you go. Waving at me. You're waving at me. I see you. I see you. Okay. Yes. I see you, Miss Victoria. I see you. I see you, Doreen. Okay. Okay. To me. Oh, my goodness. Look at y'all. Look at y'all. How many of you all, watch this. How many of us, I'm trying to pose this right, VIP, I love y'all, because y'all just going in. I just love this. Y'all, y'all on fire tonight. Y'all leaving this week on fire. You all are leave, leaving this week with the wisdom and knowledge to change your financial tree. I promise you. I promise you. I got a simple question for you tonight. One of the quotes that I live by, my community knows this, my E3 community, uh, they know this. The caliber of your financial future will be determined by the financial choices you made today. I'm going to say this one more time. I want you to write this down. I want you to live by this. If you've never heard of me before, my community hears this all the time. The caliber, the quality, the taste, the flavor. The, 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 I don't know, whatever y'all else, whatever else you want to call it. Um, um, whatever you desire to have in your financial future. Let's pause right there. On a sheet of paper, I want you to write down a number. I want you to write down. How much money do you want a month by the time you are ready to retire? If that's 50, if that's 60, if that's 70, if that's 45, I don't know. How much money do you want a month to retire? Write that down. VIP, if you both put it in the chat. I want Give me a realistic number. How much money do you want a month to retire? Sharon? You need to go up, darling. You need more than $5,000. Okay, I'm seeing $10,000. i am seeing $20,000. i am seeing, boy, y'all going big. I see $100,000. Okay, I'm seeing $20,000. i am seeing $83,000. Okay, I like the number $83,000. i am seeing $8,000. Good number. $10,000. Good number. $55,000. Good number. What else we got over here? I'm seeing $6,000. Okay, cool. Great. I'm, I, I want... Um, if you are, if you have a sheet of paper, general audience, because I want to make sure y'all feel included in this, all right? I want you to write down your number and put it up on the screen. I want you to write down your number on a sheet of paper. Go find you a sheet of paper. Go find you a, 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 a piece of tissue or something, and I want you to put it up on the screen, okay? Um, brothers, if you may got her number on the, on the front, just turn it over to the back so we don't see her number, okay? Um, um, write down the number, husband and wife. Before you put the number on, Rodney, I see, I see you, brother. Freeman, I like your last name because you're going to be a free man, a financially free man. Write down the number. Okay, hold on a minute. Leave it right there. Okay, Ms. Johnson, I see 75. No, was he at 75K? Erica, go back a little bit so I can see it, Erica Parker. Go back, go back, darling. Um, um, okay, okay. Uh, Ingrid, 50 grand. Uh, Rodney, 20 grand. Husband and wife. Leslie, what's that, Leslie? Hold on, y'all moving too fast. So where Leslie go? I got to find her, Leslie. Where, where you at, Les? Um, um, I got to find you again, Les, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to get you. Erica, 100,000. <coughs> the caliber of your financial future, the roadmap and the determination of you getting to that financial goal, Curtis, will be determined by the choices you make right now. Say this one more time. 
$83,000. Lisa, $30,000. The only thing that is stopping you from reaching that goal is the decision you make today. I'm going to say it one more time. Because I really want you to get this to me. What we tend to do as people is we tend to forget about where we're trying to go. And then what happens is we get there and we're like, what did I do? You didn't make a decision that got you to where you wanted to go. You made a decision that got you where you went. I'm saying one more time. Oh, my goodness. The caliber of your financial decision, your financial future, I'm sorry, will be determined by the choices we made today. I want to retire. I'm 40. I'll be 40 in two, three months. Man, I'm, I, I, and I know I look good for my age. I look like I'm only like 25. Thank you. Uh, Nora, don't laugh at me. I see you laughing, Nora. Don't laugh at me. Um, 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 Harriet, I see you trying to laugh a little bit. Don't do it. Erica, don't you laugh. Why y'all laughing at me? Okay? All right? Listen to me. I'm going to be 40. <clears throat> I was talking to my father, and he's in his 60s. He'll be 63, and my mom will be 62 this Thursday. And... Um, and my dad said, man, what is the goal? You know, you're doing great now. You're doing good now. But what is the goal for when you turn my age? He said, are you going to retire at 59 and a half? I said, no, sir, I'm not. I'm not retiring at 59. He was like, what you mean? I said, dad, I'll never retire because I enjoy what I do. But by 50, I would never have to get up and have to work. My money will make money for me. And it will fund the lifestyle that I desire because of the decisions that I'm making today. My dad looked at me like, boy, you, what are you talking about? I said, yeah, dad, that's the difference between my generation. Your generation was stuck on get a good job, get a good 401k benefits, retire well. Got a house up on the hill, you good. My generation is like, yo, I, I don't want to retire. I, I don't want to quit because I enjoy what I do, but I do want to make sure that when I get up, I don't have to work. I want to be in a position to where my money is duplicating and having kids. The best analogy, some of y'all may not like it, but I, you know, I love it. I'm going to tell my money to go have sex and have twins. Give me triplets. Give me quadruplets. Go duplicate yourself. It's called the power of compound interest. I want my money working for myself. So, Pops, I am making the decision to get around the right people, trade and travel, to get around the right people to learn how to make the right decisions today so that when I turn 50, my money is in the millions and I'm living off of the compound of my money and I can pass down the principle of my money to my children, to my children's children, to my local community, and leave an inheritance. But if I don't make the right decision today, if I do not make the right decision today, I'm not going to be there. So let's talk about decisions in my last 10 minutes. I'm going give to give you one decision that changed my life. And here it is. I learned how to earn money. Uh oh. Let me say one more time. I finally learned in my late 30s how to earn. Got a pen and paper. I want you to write down the letter earn. I'm going to have to letter. I'm going to write down the word earn. Put E A R N coming down. E A R N. E A R N. So one more time. E A R N. <clears throat> I'm going to give you this. And then VIP, we're going to go a little bit deeper. One of the best decisions I learned is I learned how to really evaluate what am I doing in my life. Average people exchange their time for money. Wealthy people exchange their money for time. Average people earn money. Wealthy people earn time back. I'm not earning no more money. I, I'm, I'm past that stage. Right now, 
I am earning more of my time back. I want time. When I get married, I want to spend time with my wife. When I have kids, if I have kids, I want to spend time with my kids. I want to spend more time in my local church, my local community. I want to spend more time traveling. I don't want to wake up every single day for the rest of my life having to exchange my time for money. So I've learned how to earn. I'm going to give you what earn means for me. You can apply this, and I promise you it will change your life for area, every area in your life. Because remember, we're trying to change the caliber of our financial future. We're over faith. We're, we're done making the wrong decisions with our finances. You all are here today. You all are making the right decision by getting the wisdom and the knowledge so that you can start investing. Now that you're here, let me give you some help to help you understand while you're learning how to invest, when you get this money, this is what you need to do to earn it. Here's number one, evaluate your current situation. That's E. Evaluate your current financial situation. Evaluate your current situation. Where are you in life? The only way we can progress forward is if we are honest with ourselves of where are we? I often hear where we want to go, what we want to do. I want to do this. I'm going to do this. But brother, where are you? What's going on in your life today? How much money do you honestly have to invest today? How much debt are you in right now? Married people. <clears throat> When's the last time you sat down and you asked your spouse, where are we? Are we in a healthy place? How are you? I know you love me, but do you love me more than you loved me when we first got married? Parents, when is the last time you asked your kids, how am I parenting you? When is the last time we've evaluated where we currently are? And where are you? Man, I'm blessed. I ain't got no debt. But I still evaluate where I'm at financially. I still look at my bank account every morning. I still look at my budget at least once a week. Every month, I'm always evaluating where am I financially? How am I here today? As a single person, I'm always evaluating myself with my mentors, my accountability partners, my therapists. Hey, how am I spiritually, mentally, physically? Like, I'm always evaluating myself. I'm turning 40 this year, and there's some doctor visits that I'm not looking forward to going to on July 1st on my birthday, but I got to go and evaluate my physical body because we can't get to where we want to go if we're not evaluating where we are. Here's A. Six more minutes. I want you to arrange the vision. Hey, people, I'm about to stand up and give them an example of me standing. So um, I think, I don't know where, how wide I can go. If someone can just come over here and tell me. where I can go wherever I want. Oh, I like this yeah. place. I forgot where I am. Look at the Lord. Okay, um, um, so listen. This is the end all vision for me, for Anthony, okay, right here. I'm going to stay in the light because I'm black, so I got to make sure y'all can still see me. All right. This is where I want to be. When I am on my deathbed, I'm looking at my wife, and boy, she's still going to be fine. Respectfully, she's going to have a nice coat, of, coat bottle shape. She's going to be 90, 100 years old, still looking like she's 20. She's going to be fine. You know, I came into this world crying, but I'm going to leave this world smiling. Because when I look at my wife, when I look at whatever family God has given me, when I look back at everything that I've done and how I've set up my church, my family, my people, I'm leaving this world smiling. You know why? Because I'm not leaving him with debt. I'm not leaving him with bondage. I'm not leaving him with any hatred. I'm leaving him with joy, peace. And the only thing that they're going to miss is me. They're not going to have any issues with any debt, with no issues. It's just uh, their husband, is, her husband is gone. Their father is gone. Their loved one is gone. This is the vision. I want to make sure that when I leave this world, people will know my name by the things that I left them. But I'm not here yet. I don't plan on being here anytime soon. Where I'm at is over here. 
Follow me, camera. I'm over here. Okay, right here by the light. But I'm right here. The vision is over there. So what I got to do now is arrange the vision. And I have to make sure, watch this, anybody that comes into my life, anyone that I give my ear to, my eyesight to, and my mouth to, they are helping me get to my vision. If you don't have a vision, you are all over the place. You could be here one day. You could be over here one day. You could be over here one day. What I'm about to do is going to be so uncomfortable. I want you to get this. You could be over here one day. Y'all can't see my face. You only see my shirt. And they're going to show my face. <laughs> but what I'm saying is if you don't have a clear vision, you do not know where you're going. And the last thing you want to do is be all over the place. And you're allowing all these people come into your life and you're not getting to where you need to be going. And so at this season of my life, when I arrange the vision, it helps me to stay focused, to stay determined and to get to where I need to be. R. Because now that we know where we currently are and we know where we want to go, how do we get there? So how do we go from here to there? You got to render the strategy. Write that down. Put that in the chat. You got to render the strategy and the system to get to where you want to be. You know, I, I am blessed. I won't say any names. I don't like name dropping. But I am blessed to have a billionaire mentor in my life. And I have several millionaire friends, multimillionaire friends. And a lot of you all know me from the Dave Ramsey days. Um, and I've had the opportunity to work with him and sit up, sit up underneath his tutelage and learn from them. And one thing that I learned from wealthy people, they're not wealthy because they have a whole lot of money coming in. They're not wealthy because they had this brilliant idea that was just, oh my gosh. <clears throat> Can I be honest with you? You all have million dollars ideas in you. You all have million dollar strategies inside of you. You all have all these creative ideas and creative thoughts. Why? Because you was fearfully and wonderfully made. You were not made by accident. There is a purpose. There is an assignment. There is something that's on the inside of you that can come out. But the problem is rich people are not wealthy. They're not rich. They're not millionaires. They're not billionaires because they have an idea that supersedes your idea. Because the same way they came on this earth is the same way you came on this earth. Let me help you understand what's the difference. They figured out a strategy and a system. You're going off of dreams and laziness. <sighs> I'm going to sit down. I'm still not feeling well. <clears throat> and when I realized that, man, I could be the most talented people. Um, I could be around the most talented people. I was one of the most talented people, but I never followed a proven strategy or a system. But when I got on a proven strategy or a system, when I signed up for Take Your First Trade Challenge and I started taking notes from experts, from people who had the wisdom, from people who had the strategy, the strategy and the system, and I started following it, that's when I started seeing my dreams were coming to pass. That's when I started noticing that I'm getting closer to my vision. When I started asking the right questions, when I started signing up for boot camps, when I started going to church and reading my Bible, when I started going around wiser and, and healthier men, when I started getting around wiser and healthier women, when I started surrounding myself, when I started reading books more than looking at shade room and, 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 and spiritual word, when I started giving and feeding myself the right stuff, I came up with the right strategy in the system that helped me get out of debt, that helped me start, start investing into the stock market, that helped me plant a business that turned into a multi-million dollar business in a matter of a year, and we have it going back down. When I started getting this strategy, but here's the problem. Here's the real problem. 
Who? It's hot in here. Jesus. When I started getting the strategy, can I be honest with you? I didn't act. Five years ago, I told y'all in the beginning of my talk that I was given this strategy by my investor. What did he say? Anthony, get this real estate property. It's going to make you a lot of money. It is on the beach. I was scared. I wasn't living there. People were telling me, oh, people are going to blow up. They're going to mess up your, your house. They're going to mess up your walls. You have to spend all this money for it. Anthony, don't do it. I was getting the strategy from the wrong people. But the person who was making money, who is now worth almost $25 million because of real estate, I'm not worth that much money. But I could be closer to that if I would have listened to the man or to the woman with the strategy. So he gave me the strategy. But I really want you to look at me. Look at me. At 40, I owe my mom and dad an apology. Because you know what I realized? The majority of things my mom and dad told me not to do, I should not have done it. The majority of things that my parents said, hey, you should do this, when I was young, I should have done it. You know why? They've been through life. You know why? They've been through where I was about to go. You know why? Because they had the strategy. They had the strategy. But here it is. I didn't act. And that's in. Now act. If you learn how to earn, you're going to go from earning money to where you've earned the money. Now your money is earning your time back. And when I think about what Terry is doing here, when I think about what, what, what she's doing without, within her brand, period, she's not just trying to help you make more money in the stock market. She's trying to help you get to your vision. She's trying to help you get to the point to where if you can learn how to trade, if you can learn the stock market, if you can get this strategy, you're going to get everything that you desire. Everything that you desire. You got to stop procrastinating. You got to not be fearful. You got to have faith. And you have to trust the strategy. I just feel as if when I think about how much money I've missed out on because I procrastinated or I was fearful, I get emotional. I'm not saying jump today. I'm not saying jump all in today. No, what I am saying, step. Trust yourself. And I promise you, you're going to thank yourself. Earn. Evaluate where you are. Arrange your vision. Render the strategy. Now act. And the earn philosophy happens in every season of your life. Once you act, you're going to have to go back and evaluate where you are. <laughs> Check the vision. Right? Make sure you have the right strategy. And if you don't have the right strategy for the new season that you're in, now you got to render the right strategy. Now you got to act on that strategy. And you're always going to be repeating that. Man, listen, put in the chat if this helped you out tonight. Put this in the chat if, if this helped you out tonight. Wave at me on, on the cameras in the general session if this helped you out tonight. You know, tonight I... I, 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 I was... I wasn't feeling my best. And I was like, man, um, any other, any, someone else I would have counseled on them and said, hey, man, I don't feel good, uh, but I believe in a vision. 
that Terry has here within her organization. I believe in what she's doing. I say, you know, I'm going to come. I got some nice little hot tea here. The Omegas would call this hot toddy. I'm not a Greek. I'm calling this hot lemonade. Mm. And this Yeti is good. This Yeti is real good. Um, we're about to go into the VIP session. I think my sister's coming back up. You all are so welcome. Um, you all are so welcome for coming. Uh, Demetrius, Grant, I see you, man. I'm a people's person, so I just love talking to people. Y'all can come whenever y'all want, Terry. And uh, um, Yeah, whenever y'all want. I don't know what's next. I just love talking to people. Uh, but uh, April, good to see you. You know, Charlie, good to see you, man. I just love talking to people. Uh, Shania, well, VIP, I'll talk to y'all later. It's just a general VIP. Yvonne, I, I love you. I love you. I see you. I see you. Yes, I see you. Ingrid, I see you too, darling. Oh, and hold on, Miss MacArthur, MacArthur, am I saying it right, Miss MacArthur? Yes, okay, then, yes. Listen, if the goal and the plan was to elevate, what, what, what they said, thank you. <laughs> I feel as though I just, listen, I sat through a master class, a church service, I was taking all the notes, you told me off a little bit because you told me not to take my big dreams to people who don't have no vantage point. Yes. And the only reason I'm procrastinating is, is because I don't have any faith in myself. Did y'all feel like a little, <clears throat> yeah. a little twinge? I had, to, I had to gulp real quick. He said, he said because I procrastinated. I said, oh, mm. right? Mm -hmm. It was what, $790,000 that you lost? I like numbers, y'all, so I wrote it down. This is very good. 790,000, I don't know. See, I listen. Cheryl, I felt that too, and I got baptized. It felt like a whole baptismal situation that, that was occurring. Listen, thank you so much, Anthony. I, I am truly grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, so much. Yes. And now, before we let our general folks go, I want you to remember you have homework. If you have not already done so, I need you to do so now. Make sure you download the CNBC app. This is the easiest homework you are going to do. Yeah. Once you have downloaded it, I want you to, before you head out, as you are heading out, put in your reaction just a hands up saying, yes, I did it. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, for those who are VIP, I need you to stay here. Stay here. And if you still want to become a VIP member, you can absolutely do that. Thank you so much. I see that I did it. I see the homework. Yay, listen, done. We love it. We love a little baby who's going to listen. We love it. We love it. We love it. Ruth asked, how do we connect to the VIP session? In your dashboard, there's a link to upgrade to VIP. So you can still upgrade in your dashboard. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because we are having full faith in ourselves. Because yeah. you said we lack faith in ourselves. And what it reminded me of is faith is simply confidence in the outcome, no matter what it currently looks like. That's all faith is. Oh, so I want to make sure you guys join us tomorrow. General admission, I bid you adieu. Thank you so much. Your dashboard is, we caught it at the same time. Your <laughs> dashboard, you have to log in to your profile, you was, that is your, as soon as you log in, there's your yep. dashboard. The same link that you use to get into the main stage, when you click that link, it'll show a couple buttons. One of those is to upgrade to VIP. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Okay, so also too, if you are VIP and you get knocked off, don't worry. You can get right back on by just yeah. going right into your dashboard, logging in, click that same link and it'll bring you right back in, okay? Yeah. All right, so we are going to give you all a five-minute break. Yep, that's right. VIP, stay here, though. You can stay on, go get something to drink, get some popcorn, go to the restroom real quick, and then we'll meet you right back here for the interview. Yes, and if you have joined the VIP, then yes, you are VIP, so I want to make sure you are yes. still here with us, Gwendolyn, okay? All right, we will see you shortly. We're going to jam out. <laughs>
Now, if you have been here, which I know you have, because I've been watching you all the entire evening, then you know not only did Terry educate us, telling us where we started, helping us to release, and I can't even speak for y'all, but I'm gonna speak for myself, helping me to release some of the fear that I had when we got started this evening, then you should know that this VIP section, this session right here, oh, we about to get into it. Mm -hmm. Are y'all ready? Because I'm about to get in y'all business real quick. My business? Ready? Your business, all in it. Now go, go to Terry's first. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> Men first. No. <laughs> Listen, I want you guys to remember this, and, and I and I want to ask, before we hop into y'all business, I'm going to get into our, our, our attendees' business, just real quick. Who started the evening and they were a little afraid? And we telling the truth. Remember, y'all, I told y'all I didn't know what an index was, so I told y'all some of my truth. So who started the evening and they were a little afraid? You were afraid to get started. You were afraid of what you didn't know. Thank you, Angela, for not allowing me to be out here on my own by myself. Yes, listen, more than afraid, right? Because we were yeah. afraid of what we didn't know. Now, who feels a little bit of relief? Even if you may, you can still have a little bit of fear. That's all right. Be afraid to make the move anyway. You got to feel relief. But who are you feeling a little bit better? Yes. Okay. So, okay, Tyrone said he exhaled. Yes. We love a good exhale. Relieved. Yes. That's okay because we don't have to keep identifying with being the procrastinator. We can do, we can choose something else. We don't have to let fear and procrastination keep us bound. Yeah. So now we're about to, because I told y'all I was going to step into y'all business before we stepped into theirs. So now we're going to take a step out of y'all business and now we're going to hop into, into a little bit more of the story because one of the things that we are really excited about with this VIP experience is to find out more information, to, to dive a little deeper. So if you all have questions, make sure you're adding those questions. We want to make sure that we get to those. But now, Anthony, and I'm not sure if you saw in the chat, but one of the things that I was taking a look at and this isn't, of course, y'all VIPs, because y'all are different. Y'all y'all special. But for many folks, they get frustrated when the response to their need for more money is to work on their mindset first. Because it's kind of like, listen, I already told you, I, I need to get to the monies. And you talk about mindset, can we, can we move a little faster? But why is it that you don't just start first with giving the tools to grow your money? Like, why do you start with mindset first? I mean, it, it, the foundation of who you are is mind, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, think about that. Whatever starts here goes into your heart. Mm -hmm. Whatever goes into your heart manifests out here. Absolutely. So if you sit here and say, hey, I'm going to be debt free. I'm going to be wealthy. I'm going to take my first trade. I'm going to trade. I'm going to trade on Terry's level. If you say that here, it's going to come into your heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when it's into your heart, it's going to happen because now your mind and your soul is connected. One of the things that I, I really, really believe in when it comes to success is that if your why doesn't make you cry then the price of commitment will make you cry mm -hmm. and what am i talking about there is that if your why internal if you're if you haven't thought about why do you want financial freedom why do you want to learn how to trade if you haven't thought about this in your mind yeah. first you're going to cry physically and that's why we're always stressed and, and and crying over money because we haven't started where it starts you have to mind your business <laughs> Because your mind is your business, and if we can really fuel this mind of ours, it's going to come here and it's going to come out. So I never really focus on money. Mm. I'm always focusing on how do I evolve, how do I mature, how do I grow as a, as a man. And once this grows, my money has to grow. Yeah. Isn't there a statement or something that says, like, so a man thinketh yeah, he I is? Think so is he. Yes. I feel like how you see yourself, how you think about money, that's going to materialize in, in all different ways in life. Yeah. And you can get a ton of money, but then just waste it if you don't have the right mindset. So that, that, And that's literally evident in folks who win the lottery. Yeah. Usually within five years, they're broke. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have a money problem. We have a mindset problem. Nice. And that is why this particular take your first trade is so incredibly important <coughs> because you are literally taking us, not just teaching us the tool, but you're also then sharpening our mind. So now, Terry, because I told you I was getting in your business, and one of the hardest things for people to accept is change. Yeah. Like, it's something about change that just, it literally will have people stuck for 10 years 
not making a move. But for you, change, you seem, it kind of kind of floats <laughs> like water off a duck's back. You've gone from, and you still are a minister, but yeah. you serve differently now, but from an assistant principal to now what the number one course on Teachable. Mm -hmm. How did you get so comfortable with, with that change? Like, and if you had to create a recipe, because y'all, listen, I don't understand parables. I was raised super religious, and I would tell them all the time, please don't King James version me. I need a <laughs> new international version because I'm not going to understand it, okay? Okay, okay. So if you had to create a recipe or, or to give us a formula for mm. people who do struggle with change, what does that look like? What would that formula be? Ooh, you're coming with the hard questions. Listen, I dug deep for these. So... I would say if I was talking to my therapist, you know, they tell you to go back to when is your earliest memory of change, and then you can see how it materializes now. Mm -hmm. For me, I used to move to a different apartment every year. My mom, she was a like a real estate agent, and she used to work in apartments, which, funny enough, I started working in real estate and working in apartments later in my life. But we literally would move every year. And so I think I got used to the idea of like something new and it became a joy because I got to start seeing like, okay, like what's new in this house? How do I set this room up? Like, oh, this one has a cool bathroom. Oh, this one has a big room. I can put my whole bed in here. So I started really enjoying the idea of looking forward to things that are new. Yeah. So I think that would be my recipe, trying to find the positive and the good things about each new opportunity that you have and thinking through exactly. like, what what's new about this that I like and how can I learn from this? Yeah. <sighs> Terry's so wise. Y'all could tell she a preacher. <laughs> okay. You know, um, the wisdom just flows. The wisdom just flows, you know. Um change makes millionaires. Mm -hmm. And I think what we saw in COVID time is that if you were willing to adapt, adjust, and to overcome without procrastinating, you took advantage of the season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The people who were not willing to adapt, adjust, and overcome, who complained, who was looking for a handout, right, they did not overcome the season. And so what I think, on top of what Terry said, it's just really about learning how change, I saw in the comment earlier, and I agree with it, change is the only permanent thing that's going to happen in America. The only Ooh, constant. Yeah. It's the only thing that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Something is going to happen. Life is going to happen. You may get yeah. let go from your job. You may, you know, unfortunately go through a divorce. You may, yeah. We may lose money in the stock market. We, we don't know. You have to be willing to embrace change and instantly, and I'll say this and, and, and be quiet. I was, I was uh, uh, 10 years old riding down a hill with my dad. My dad was in the Marines, so he could run faster than I could ride my bike. Hmm. I'm, embar I'm embarrassed by that, but that's just how quick he was in the Marines. Yeah. And it was coming down this hill. It was a very steep hill, and instantly I saw my dad uh, trip over his feet, but he rolled and got right back up and started running. Oh, wow. Oh. And when I got back to the house, I'm sitting there screaming like, Dad! And he quickly saw himself running. Rode, got back up, started running. Didn't even say, hey, I'm good or nothing. He just kept running. Wow. Yeah. And I was wow. like, that's cool. I would have laid down and cried. I, I right? was scared for my dad. We got back to the house. He went and got a shower. We sat down and we had dinner. And uh, he said, son, did you see what happened earlier? I was like, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> and he was like, no, that's just life. Hmm. And he said, son, life is going to hit you unexpectedly. Yeah. The only way you can live through life is if you're willing to adapt instantly. Ooh. And instead of for me settling for falling and hitting my teeth maybe and scratching, mm -hmm. instantly you got to train yourself to adapt mm. and adjust yeah, and adapt overcome. And if you don't overcome a situation, you're going to allow the embarrassment that you did not get up. And he said, I didn't want you to have to sit there and stop and cry. And he said, I had to quickly do that. And he said, and that's life, son. And as you get older, go through that. So this was good. So now, Terry, you said shift your perspective. Because if you find the, the good thing, the happy thing, then it can make it so that it's not so challenging for you. And then you, Anthony, added some goodness in there. We're going to shift our perspective first. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to, what was it? Change, adapt, and I missed that third one. What was that third one? Adapt, adjust, and overcome. Mm, totally messed that adapt, up. Adapt, <laughs> adjust, and overcome. And overcome. Okay. <laughs> Adapt, adjust, and overcome. Oh, you and like the that. AOs. You did the AAO. 
Absolutely. That was intentional. Yeah. You Come are. on, everything's I, branded now. I everything's see, branded. I. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, Listen. Lord. Now, I'm not going to be the only one asking some questions. <laughs> I have been seeing your questions that you added in here, and it literally aligns with what you both were just talking about. Uh, the question was, is they were worried that the stock market keeps going down, and is this the right time to start investing? It's going down. Well, right? So I think, <laughs> I, I think, I think the key is, it sounds like that might be a mindset thing, but not the truth. And, I mean, if we do get biblical, like, there's a scripture that says, speak on those things or think on those things that are true. And I think sometimes we can, like, we can falsify things in our mind. The market is actually at all-time highs right now. And it's been going up and up and up over over the years. In 2022, it did come down, but just 20%. And then over the last year, rebounded. And literally right now on the S&P, uh, you guys are going to learn all that later this, this week. But in the major indexes of the stock market, it's higher than it's ever been. It's, it's come down a couple times recently. But to tell you the truth, this quarter alone, we were up 10%. And and usually the market averages 10% in a year. So that actually is just not the truth. Mm. Listen, and this is why, what, what, you, what you had told us, I got to go back to my notes just so I can make sure I say that correctly. You cannot be asking people for their vantage point when they have not been where you are going. Woo child, this is good. I don't know about y'all, but I, I'm going to ask my questions, and I'm going to head on over to ask y'all questions, too. We're going we gonna to do this thing together. And, and let me add this, too, though, because I think it's very, very important. I think, you know, you the only time you lose money is when you pull it out, right? So if it's down and you pull it out, you're going to lose money. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you leave it in there the way that you will learn throughout the stock market this week, that's just on paper, now, once you keep it in there, like for me, the S&P 500, if you keep it in there for 10 years, let's say if you do have a bad year one year, well, those nine years, it's going to make up for that one bad year. Mm. So it's all about being strategic again and following the strategy that you learned this week on how to make sure you're still making money. Yeah. And shout out to Judy. She must be in the, the trade and travel program. She's like, we make money when the market go down. <laughs> <laughs> you right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, perspective, okay? Okay. So now, for some, Anthony, it, it, there is this internal struggle, right, between their faith and their money. Because somewhere, somebody might have told some folks that if you're rich, you're either not good, or rich people are bad, or they must have sold their soul to make money. And how would you suggest folks begin to work through those incredibly limiting, you know, incredibly limiting thoughts and feelings so that they can actively grow and increase their wealth? Um, <clears throat> good question. You know, for me, I don't want to be rich. I want to be wealthy. Wealthy people are generous. Mm -hmm. Rich people means that I have a lot of money that came in. Wealth means I have a lot of money that stayed in and I'm generous with it. Mm -hmm. And so for That's me, it. you know, I, I, I focus on if, if people are frowning because my net worth is high up there, they're frowning because they're intimidated by something that they should be doing themselves. Nope. They're not. They're not. They're not. They're not frowning on wealthiness and, and and people who have a lot of money. They're frowning on because they wish that was me, but they lack strategy and systems to get there. Yeah. And so in order and 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 and, and uh, <clears throat> man, I, I'm so foggy in my head right now. Uh, but instead of them trying to learn and get the wisdom and the knowledge, mm -hmm. they want to attack. And so that's what we've learned. And so for me, I I, I want wealth. Why do I want wealth? Because my, my Bible, my book, I don't go nowhere without this thing. Um, it says you're supposed to leave inheritance to your children's children. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm broke, if I'm living paycheck to paycheck, what inheritance am I leaving them? What inheritance? And Steve Harvey said this one thing that woke me up back in 2014. Um, his great-great-grandmother was on her deathbed, and, and she asked Steve Harvey a question. She said, do you know your great-great-grandfather's name? He said, no. She said, do you, know, do you know why? He was like, no. And she said, because he didn't leave you anything. Ooh. And she told Steve Harvey, make sure that you leave your great-great-great-grandchildren something so that they may not see you, but they will know you. And I want to make sure that I leave an inheritance and an impression on this world and that they know me. And I do that by money, but the money is just a tool. Yeah. 
It is not the end all be all. It is a tool so I can expand the kingdom so that I can bless my family so that we can have a, a blessed life. And so for me, when I hear people scared about wealth, I don't think you're scared about money. I think you're scared to get the wisdom and the knowledge and, and do the things what it requires for you to do to get there. Mm. Yeah. Listen. Oof. I'll add a couple a couple yes. bl- biblical things yeah, too. I, I felt it. That's uh, why I said, "Oh wait." <laughs> I a um, so in the in the Bible, because your question did talk about yes. money and and faith, right? Mm-hmm. In the Bible, um, it says that Jesus's ministry was funded by some business women, yes. and they were funding him out of their wealth. So a lot of times, or I, I would say oftentimes, ministry needs some funding. Absolutely. And God is going to have to bring some people around with some money to fund that ministry. So for all the people that are like, oh, you can't be wealthy and do ministry. Well, who else is going to help fund it? And then I think another thing I would say on the, the wealth is a lot of people talk about there's a scripture where it's harder to get through the eye of a, ne- a camel to get through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. But a little further down, it says, but all things are possible through Jesus Christ. And I think oftentimes we miss that part. That the scripture was not so much about what the rich man could do. It was more about what God could do. Mm. So that's be two thoughts. I mean, I'm just, I mean, he's got two preachers over here. I got to say something. <laughs> Come on, Terry. Come on, priest. Now, listen, it's all about the posture of your heart, too, though. Very true. You know, it's like it, if the posture of your heart is all about I, 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 that's wrong. Yeah. And the more um, money you make that I will start to expand. Exactly. For me, it's all about, for my business, I've never said, God, bless me with this much money. I say, God, bless me with the capability to bless and to give away X amount. So if I'm saying, God, bless me to where I can give away, for an example, our goal this year is $350,000 cash, Mm -hmm. but God got to bless me with more than that to give it away. away. Yes. And so I'm like, God, this is what I want. Then I work backwards. Okay, if I got to get there, God, that means we got to, our companies make this much money, yeah. right? But I start, okay, what's the goal to be a blessing? What's the goal of how I can set up my kids? What is the goal of how much I can leave my kids? How much more do I want to put on top of my tithe and offerings? Mm-hmm. If you start there with the posture of your heart, yeah. God will give you the strategy and the systems to get that and then some. So then it brings it back to what's your why. That's what yeah. it's sounding like. Mm-hmm. It, it sounds like it's your why. And one of the things that I always like to, to say is, is what's in you is what's going to come out of you. Mm, that's good. So if you hit me in my head and I cuss you out, yes, you, you, you may have done something, but you can't get out of me what's not already in me. So what I always like to tell people, and there's a, a scripture that says, you know, renew a right spirit in me, you know, like check, check my heart. So I always say, check my heart. Like, and you can, and we can do this ourselves, right? So I want us to do this as we are building wealth, check your heart, figure out what's your why, because if we can all sit in our why and our why got, if it, if our why don't make us cry, what, what was it? If your, my, if your why doesn't make you cry, then the price of a commitment to get to your goals will make you cry. Mm. Oof. That means you don't really want to do it. Yeah. All right. Now, I told y'all again, I'm asking questions. Y'all asking questions. So I want to make sure I get to this question. So should you trade using your own account or should you trade via an LLC or a company account? In the beginning, I think you should trade in your own account because when you trade in an LLC, you are trading as a professional now. And they will give you um, fees based on being a professional. So everything now will be more expensive for you. It'll be more expensive to have your brokerage account open. It'll be more expensive to have data that's active. Um, So personally, I traded as a regular person for most of my 14 years of investing. I just recently moved up because I started trading for my foundation. And, And if you trade for an entity, then you have to have to be a professional. Okay. How long was that, Terry? I think people should know that. Like, uh, man, uh, yeah. How long were you like, trading personally? Personally, probably 12 years. I just recently See? marked it. I was professional, and I honestly wouldn't have done it because it costs more money, but I was trying <laughs> to be honest. Yo, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Look at that guy renewing the right spirit with right. him. Right. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Listen, hey. <laughs> hey, Sue Christo, thank you for that one. <laughs> so, and you, you kind of spoke to it, uh, to it earlier. But there are so many changes that are happening. And, and whatever you focus on, it expands. Yeah. It really, really does expand. So if you only focus on, oh, what you think is bad or what people are saying, whether or not it's the truth, that 
that story will expand for you. And so for many folks, they can feel defeated because it's that, well, this is what everyone is saying or this is what, you know, what everyone else is experiencing. So that whole waiting for someone else can say, to save us, it can feel kind of comforting. Mm. Now, maybe not for, for y'all, okay? But for me, because I like to tell the truth a little bit, hoping someone else will save me makes me just feel a little bit good, even if for a moment. <laughs> but what would you say are some of or and actually both of you, what would you say are some of the top three mindset shifts that you need to adopt so that we can start to own our power more? Want a popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to do that to me. Uh, we've been knowing each other too long. <laughs> I knew that the eyes were peering over here. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so one mindset shift is that everybody knows better than you do. There's this, like, in the investing world, oftentimes people quote Warren Buffett, like, well, Warren Buffett's a billionaire, and so he said do this, so I have to do it this way, which, I mean, of course, you should always seek wise counsel, like, yes, he's done it, like, do the thing. However, like, oftentimes he would tell people, well, you, the average person is not smart enough to do this, so that's why. But I, I think we got to start learning to depend on ourselves. Like, we can, we are capable. We don't, we don't have to always feel like, because someone else says I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. Yeah. I need you to just repeat that one more time, and then I need y'all VIPers, I need y'all to type that in the chat so everybody can get that one more time. And maybe it's not Warren Buffett. Maybe it's just somebody in your life that's once told you that you were not good enough and you believed it. I think we have to start believing that we are good enough and we are capable and not listening to those voices. Yes, we are good enough and we are capable. Yes. All right, Anthony. So that was the, the first mindset shift is that I am good enough. I got one. Okay, okay. I got one. I don't know if I have three. But that's okay. The, with the two of y'all, we're two. Or yeah, we three got two. Together. Come on now. There Listen. you go. Huh. My head is all over the place. But I think for this one, I would say a mindset shift is that your comfort zone is your safe zone. Mm. Uh, that's false. It's false. Your comfort zone is not your safe zone. That's your kill zone. Oh, wait a minute. Not the kill zone. It is. You know, when I, when I think of this story, when I was in high school, man, I can't believe it's been almost 25 years I've been in, since I've been in high school. This is crazy. Wow, you owe. You know, um, <laughs> you know this, 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 this is illegal today, but, you know, back then we could boil frogs. And if you know anything about frogs, frogs got comfortable inside of the heat. So whenever frogs would get inside the heat, they would fall asleep. Right, and so when we'll boil a frog, we will boil the frog. Unfortunately, to death, it's illegal today in their sleep. And as I got older and I got wiser, I heard the Holy Spirit tell me one time, Anthony, the reason why you're where you are today is because you became the frog. And I was like, mm -hmm. Pops, I'm, I'm not asleep. He said, No, the died. Fro the, the frog died in its comfort zone, not in its sleep. You see, the frog was comfortable. And how many of us are comfortable? Well, I'm comfortable over here not doing this. I'm, I'm comfortable doing, doing this. But really, that is killing your dreams. It's killing your capabilities to get to where you want to be. Because nothing extraordinary happens inside of our comfort zone. So for me, I've always stressed myself and said, if I'm getting comfortable, this is not my safe zone. I need to stretch myself and get outside of this. Because now, watch this, when I'm, I'm just a preacher in me. When I'm inside of here, I no longer need him. Mm -hmm. When I'm comfortable, when I feel safe, I no longer need him. He can't stretch me. So that's one mindset shift I would tell everybody, which is why I'm so grateful that you all came here tonight. Because a lot of you all said, hey, one, I was nervous. I was nervous. No, what I hear you saying is I'm uncomfortable, and God connected me to Terry. Mm. And because God connected me to Terry, now I'm, 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 I'm not all the way comfortable. I'm not there yet, but I'm going to trust the wisdom. I'm going to trust the guidance. I'm going to trust what I'm going to learn here this week, and I'm going to take my time. But watch this. Something now extraordinary is going to happen because you shifted that one thing. Yeah. Because your comfort zone is the kill zone. Y'all, I don't know about y'all, but I watch a lot of, like, action shows. And so that, that kill zone, as soon as you said kill zone, I saw the snipers on the roof trying to take me out. I don't know about y'all, but that's immediately <laughs> what I saw, so I had to move. <laughs> I don't even know if y'all caught it, but I moved real quick because I was like, oh, no, I'm going to get shot. <laughs> but now. In your comfort zone, you're going to get shot. There you the, go. That's the kill zone. So 
stuff, we got to get out of the kill zone, y'all. We got to get real uncomfortable and be okay with being uncomfortable. And I do want to get to that third, that third little mindset shift nugget, but I want to make sure that before I do, I don't want to miss this question. And y'all, y'all doing so good adding, adding things in the chat. But Terry, the question was, is what would you suggest is a good initial dollar amount for your first trade? This week, we're going to be trading um, the S&P 500, but through something called an exchange-traded fund, it costs about $500. So if you have somewhere between three to 500, you'll be able to invest in the ones we talk about this week. However, there's really good companies like Amazon and Apple right now that are all under $200. So you can start investing with little as 200 in some really great companies. And then I will say um, you can also start with a simulator trading paper money. So just by being here, you're already getting the education. You can start trading for free and practicing. And then as you build your portfolio, put some real money in. Ooh, listen, you are very welcome. Now I want to tap that just that last, what would you say is a mindset shift that we want to make sure we adopt? Um, <laughs> the eyes. <laughs> Um, I think the last one for me is just do it afraid. Ooh. Like that's that's not a shift. It's just a action. Yes. Even if you're scared, that's not the time to cower down. And actually, maybe it is a shift because sometimes when we get shift. scared, we think that's protection. Mm -hmm. But I think actually it's a nudge like you're going to grow here. Yes. So do it afraid. Yes. Mm -hmm. Here's where, you, where you're going to grow. And it, it is, it's a shift and an action because faith without works is dead. Yeah. So after you have gotten your faith up, like, okay, I'm going to do it scared. Now you have to actually do something mm -hmm. because you can, if you know to breathe and you won't breathe, you're going to be in the upper room trying to figure out how did I get here? <laughs> and it's like, you're oh, not breathing, baby. You you're not breathing. Breathe, baby, just <sighs> <laughs> real easy, <laughs> real simple. <laughs> but now my last question for you, Anthony, is... Our habits create our experiences and it dictates our outcomes. So if you had to identify the top five, and if you, and I know you said you're you on the struggle bus, so we're going to be real kind to you. If you can't do five, just give us two. But what would you say are those top financial habits that hold most people back from where and who they would like to be? That's a good one. <clears throat> uh, number one, I said this earlier in my talk, uh, there's no vision for mm -hmm. their money. I saw you mm -hmm. had us everywhere, all yeah, over yeah, the world. all over the place. And I think that's that, that just represents life. I mean, how many yeah. of us over here, one, one year we're good, next year we're not good, next mm -hmm. year we're okay, or we're up and down or we're in the negative. And it's because it's, it's really no vision. There's no clear vision. That's number one. Uh, number two, when I say no vision, I'm talking about like a budget, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about money, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, a budget. Every millionaire friend and mentor, and even my billionaire mentor, um, he budgets and he embarrassed me one day because he told me that he just spent, you know, $62 the day before yesterday. And I couldn't tell him the last time I spent five mm. and he makes what I make in a year in a day. Right. And I'm like, okay, wait, if you have a vision for your money, then I need to have a vision, AKA a budget for my money. Mm -hmm. If he spends money on a budget, then I need to spend him on a, on a budget. And I asked him, say, well, did you date on the budget, too? He said, I sure did. You know what I'm saying? So, Not I mean, $100, though. Hey, man, listen. I Wait mean, a minute. What you mean? I ain't going to get all the way in your business. Yeah, right. $100 we, 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 talk, we talking about money. So <laughs> That's money. Uh, so, 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 ladies, you know, brothers, help me out, brothers, in the chat. Help me out, brothers, in the chat. <laughs> LaVon, help me out, LaVon. <laughs> help me out, bro, bro. You know what I'm saying? Help me out, because them ladies coming for me already. So that's number one. You got to have a vision. You got to have, you got to have a vision is a budget. We're really running short on time. You said five, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then number two is when it comes to this, no emergency fund. Mm -hmm. So I had this generation saying, oh, man, I, I want to invest everything. I don't want to have nothing sitting in the bank account. Well, that's dumb. I want you to invest, but you got to have an emergency fund, right? You got to have some a money. different name, though? Why? Because when you call it an emergency fund, I feel like I'm going to have an emergency because it, I've named are. it emergency. But you are going to have an emergency. Oh, must I? 
It's yes. the way y'all are pronouncing these syllables. Emergency. <laughs> like, y'all are doing <laughs> Okay, continue. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen, man. You know, you go, it's going to happen. You know? And what the last thing you want to do is have everything invested. And then, you know, if you're not investing the way Terry teaches, let's say if you're having a long-term investment, mm-hmm. um, like a mutual fund, then you're going to get hit fees if you're not, if you're not prepared for emergency. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's number yeah. two, an emergency fund. Mm-hmm. Um, then number three, a proven strategy. I talked about that. Uh, I'll let Terry get the other two. Other two. I'm getting tired and my head is all over the place right now. Okay, okay. I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> I give you three. I normally can do it, but right now I'm I'm struggling. No, it's okay. It's late. I know they're they're getting tired too. Yes. Um, repeat the question for me. No, I'm just playing. No, actually, repeat the question for me. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that's okay. I was just asking. What are some of the five financial habits that hold us back? Mm-hmm. And so if you want, you can give us one more. And then there are two more questions I want to make sure I get to from the VIP chat, too. Mm, Okay. Uh, One more financial habit is um, in in the investing world, not having patience or discipline. That's that's good. That's good. Yeah. That's That's an excellent one. And that actually, too, is that leads us to a question. So with the having patience, one of the questions was, is should they start practicing first in the simulator before they make the first trade? Or should you just trust the process and follow your expertise? I I did it the dumb way. I just threw my money in there and tried to like figure it out by that myself. That was so dumb. And that was dumb, right? So <laughs> <laughs> so now I suggest actually trying the simulator. Like okay. to press the buttons, get used to the market, see how things move, yeah. and then put your money to work. Man, why- someone asked where is where can they find the simulator? Like where can they find that so they can go in tonight? Oh. Right? Y'all want to go in tonight, right? That's what I'm feeling in my spirit. Great question. Actually, come on Wednesday because that's what we're talking about. Like, literally, that's what we're talking about is what type of brokerage accounts to open mm-hmm. and simulators. And then, like, what you're looking at when you open them. So, yeah, we're covering that this week. Yes. And then one more question. Because, listen, I, I know y'all got some good questions in here. And I'm trying to catch them quick. So, y'all give me some grace now. But now, the other question was, is should they have their emergency fund? Uh, this one lady said, no, she is not tired. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> but she said, can she or should she have her emergency fund in her brokerage account or should it be in a traditional savings or checking account? Ooh, you might be better. You want me to answer first? This show event. But you came to help. So I'm <laughs> okay, so, okay, so I, Anthony you know, talks more about this. Like, he has, like, videos on, like, high-yield savings accounts. Um, one thing I will say is... <laughs> Show event. Okay. What, one thing I will say is, in your if you have it in the right brokerage account, and again, we can cover this on Wednesday. Some of the brokerage accounts will give you a higher interest rate than putting it in a checking account. Mm. So, for example, like I think about, um, not to name names, but like Marcus at Goldman mm. was one. <laughs> Marcus and Goldman was, uh, they were on a list of people that had like 5% interest at one time. A lot of investment banks, when you have an online broker, will give you a higher interest rate. So you can let it sit there, but you just got to make sure you have the discipline not to use it if that's where you're having it sit. Mm. Um, now go ahead. Ready. Look at you. Ready. He's all, more all, the budget finance guy. So this, go ahead. This all I'm going to say is if you're going to do a brokerage account, not all of them are FDIC insured. So when we're talking about an emergency fund, I want their emergency fund to be FDIC protected, which is insurance, just in case if something happened to that account, to that bank, that money is covered. The last thing I would hate for someone to have their emergency fund, not their just savings, like they're saving up money to invest or go buy something. But when it, when I say emergency fund, I really want them to make sure that it, whatever they have it in is in the FDIC insured bank. There are several banks out there that are brokerage accounts that, that are that do offer FDIC, but there's some that doesn't. So make sure you have FDIC and not no traditional savings account because we have inflation, and I want you to get at least 3 to 5% interest on that money. Yeah. Okay. I and for that FDIC, I think you said this, but it'll up, insure up to 250000 right? And some of them will insure if you are in, in a higher tax bracket okay. or higher. Oh, but nice. Okay. For the average person, yes, two hundred fifty. Cool. I love this. Now, I know you guys have so many questions, right? <laughs> like, I see them I'm in sorry. the chat. I'm sorry. They are, they're putting four. Let me give you all the fifth one. My brain came back to me a little bit. Um, what's a habit that's preventing us from building wealth is you're not reading. Ooh. Mm. Every, if you look at every millionaire, every wealthy person, they are reading. Mm. Go out there and get you a book and, and read. 
um, I'm going to say this respectfully. I'm looking at the screen, um, you know, disrespectfully. But black people, we need to read. <laughs> we do. We, we need to read, okay? Because our other counterpart, good friends, they pass information through books, through knowledge. Yeah. We have to spend some time and to read, and that is something that is preventing us from building wealth. I read more than I watch TV, although this week I've been watching a lot of TV. You were sick. It's okay. Yeah, you were sick. I was sick. Y'all, y'all put in the chat, thank you. If you're just thankful that Anthony came today, he has been sick and he still showed up for us. So thank you so much. And there was a time. question that was asked, I believe, seven times. And I feel like if I don't ask this question, they're not going to let me come back. And, and by they, I mean your VIPs. They're going to okay. tell you to kick me out. And so I don't want to be kicked out. So I'm going to ask this question because I saw it at least seven times. They wanted to find out about taxes and trading. Yeah, today is tax day. This was the deadline. So if you are an active investor, which means you bought and sold a stock or any investment in less than a year, that's considered active. They treat it like regular income. Now, there are different. Talk to your CPA. I'm, I'm, this is educational purposes only. So there are different asset classes and exceptions to every rule, right? But usually with active investing, they treat it like regular income. So whatever tax bracket you're in right now, if your um, earnings from your active investing doesn't push you into the next tax bracket, you'll stay at that tax bracket and pay whatever that is. If you have a great year in your investments and you make a ton of money and it pushes you to the next tax bracket, then sure, you'll pay a higher tax, but you also got more money. So it'd be the same as if you got a bonus or if you had a side job, side hustle, all of them would be the same, just taxed as, taxed as active income. Excellent. And you're only taxed when you take it out? N no. Um, I'm asking because that's the question that that was the follow up. It, it really depends. So that one I would have to say talk to your CPA okay. because it depends how your finances are being being accounted for. Um, because yeah, there are some people that may have gotten a big gain, like say they got some investments from work. Sometimes they have to pay taxes on that even before they realize the gain. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, you'd have to talk to your CPA. I love it. Y'all was this good. I, I made sure I was reading real good and I got my glasses on. <laughs> Yes. Good. Yes, yes, so yes. Glad. I'm so glad that you all found so much value. We loved y'all so much and wanted to make sure you had so much information. We have stayed well past the time. I want to make sure though you join us tomorrow and every other day for the Take Your First Trade. You don't want to miss a day because the information that you are going to learn tomorrow Anthony, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. Tomorrow we have Robert Hartwell joining us. You do not want to miss it. If you have friends who you know need to be here, it's only lonely at the top if you take no one with you. I want y'all, each of you, to text at least one friend to say, hey, you need to join me. Yeah. Send them the link to have them join you. And they need to join you as a VIP so that they can get the recording for yeah. the night that they missed, okay? Be a, good, be a good steward over, over your friends, too, okay? Because we are our sister and our brother's keeper. Yeah. So is there anything else that you want to close us out with because you are the mistress of the hours? I just want to thank you all so much for coming. There's so many of you all here, and you stayed strong all the way to the end. Like, I'm seeing that there was rarely any drop-off. Y'all were in it. So thank you for coming. Please come with, come see us tomorrow. We are going to actually have, um, well, what I'll be talking about? Oh, the indexes. Yes, we're going to go Part in I'm depth. For. The history, what it is, how do you get in, all the things. So I can't wait to see you, and thank you for coming. We'll see you later. Bye, everyone. <laughs>